Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're gonna to be automating fluids, several of them. So I hope you guys are ready. So today we're gonna to try our best to get some more of these fuels automated. So we have several different things that need to be automated. Uh, refined fuel, sewage, sludge, um, and this one is gonna be one we have to do later on. That's part of blood magic. UU matter can be done fairly quickly. Or, I mean, not quickly, but can be done. Um, IC2 coolant can be done pretty fast. And powered oil is going to be kind of fun to do because I've not actually set that automation up before. So it's going to be kind of interesting to actually have that automation set up. And then biodiesel is, of course, getting into immersive engineering. Um, so all of these are pretty easy to set up for the most part. Minus the empowered oil, which has an automation step that we're going to have to take uh, and, and set up. But we can go ahead and get started with two of these that actually connect together. So one of them is to make sludge. It also connects to the empowered oil. And then over here on our automatable also connects to the creosote oil. Or not creosote oil, sorry, the refined canola oil as well. So these all can connect to one another if we do it properly. So in order to get sludge, that's what we're going to work on right now. Sludge is kind of weird, and then, and then we'll talk about refined fuel, because I mentioned that last episode that we're going to do refined fuel. We'll do that here in a little bit, because that's super simple. Um, but sludge is not so simple, and I can see it being a little bit more time-consuming. So let's take a look over here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down all of this. Should just be able to or excavate it. There we go. And we're going to turn this all to dirt. And we're going to use it as farmland, basically. Let's get a wand. You know, I, I know I had a wand somewhere. <laughs> I think I might have scrapped it. I believe. <laughs> I feel like I, it was probably in a bag and then I scrapped the bag into the EMC table. And I feel like that's maybe what I did. But anyways, this works just as good. So we're going to convert this all into farmland. And we have a machine that we need to make. Let's head on over here. The reason I, I want to talk about this. The reason I haven't made a wireless crafting terminal yet is because the mod technically is kind of broken right now in the pack. It's in the pack. It just is not loading. Um, and it'll be the same for everybody. Also, I wanted to mention, I've, I've seen a lot of people asking uh, me a question like, once I get above a certain E value here on your transmutation table, they can't put items in. Is that a bug? Yes, that is a bug with Project E. And it may be being fixed. I don't know. But as of right now, it is a bug. Once you have too much EMC, I guess you can say, um, you can't put items in. So let's go ahead and forget about all that. And we'll go into industrial foregoing. And it is a harvester. I think it's what it's called. Is it called a harvester? Not a harvester, a plant. So we have a plant sower, a plant fertilizer, plant gatherer. It's the plant gatherer is what does it. So we're going to need a hoe and we need a plant gatherer. There we go. The plant gatherer is what produces the sludge, um, but we can use the plant gatherer to also collect some stuff. We're also going to make ourselves a fertilizer and we are going to need a plant sower. If I remember correctly, I think so. Yeah, we definitely need a plant sower. So a plant sower is going to require a pot. Wow. Do we not have bricks in here? Of all things, I, th I could have thought we had bricks. There's a flower pot right there. All right. So plant sower and a fertilizer. Fertilizer is going to be pretty easy, I think. There we go. Fertilizer. These three machines in combination should allow us to do some magic. Pretty much. Uh, we're going to do some work over here. All right. So to set these machines up, they are going to be kind of hanging off the edge. Um, so we're going to keep that in mind. But the plant gatherer, it's going to go on the edge and pretty much farm this area. It's going to farm the area in front of it. Do a good job of that. The plant sower is going to go one block below the center where we want to farm our items. So if I go down here. I can place down the plant sower. Perfect. 
And then I can break this block and put the dirt back. There we go. Uh, right now, I may set it up so I can just configure it, leave it open for right now. We'll fix that later. And then we're going to use a fertilizer. I'm just going to go over here. Okay. So all these in combination, they should work together to make a really nice farm. There we go. Now it's facing the right way. Uh, we are going to get the correct size add-on. I know that the lapis one does five. So range add-on. I know that lapis does five. So this I'm assuming does six and seven. And I think this is a seven by seven. So the range add-on three. It's probably going to be the best one for us. We're going to take a look and just see. I want to make sure that th that's the right range add on. And it is. Okay. So that was correct. So it is a seven by seven area. So we're going to need three of those because technically we have three machines. So I can go ahead and turn that off. That one I know is going to be correct. I just want to make sure this one is marked correct. Okay. So it is. There we go, and we can go ahead and hide the working area. Um, crop hoeing enabled. We want that enabled. Just make sure none of this gets uh, trampled. I'm just checking all the other configs. Everything else should look fine for these machines. All they need now is power and canola. So, to get canola, we could buy it. I think I've already bought it. So, at actually additions. We should have some canola seeds. If not, I will just buy a canola seed. Just one of them. Shop. Canola seed. Perfect. So this one canola seed is going to get everything started. Right now, I'm just going to throw it in here. Lock the inventory. Uh, the way this machine works is it actually stores it in all these different quadrants. This will be one quadrant, this will be one quad, uh, quadrant, and vice versa. You can go all the way around. So you can have different plants in here if you wanted to. Um, this is just how this thing is set up. So with that one being in there, as soon as we give this some power, it should work. Now we're going to need a way to transfer items from our plant gatherer to here. So I can use item conduits. I think that's probably going to be the best way to do it. We can take some item conduits and route those. Honestly, we can break this bottom block so we can have a nice little bit of clearing. And we can just put this underneath and connect it there. What I'm going to say is, because we're going to have these other things going into a different place, and I'll put them in a chest. But for right now, this will be extract, always active, and insert. We might have to set filters on this later on, but we'll figure it out as we go. Fertilizer, well... This guy is just going to, to utilize bone mill. It's that simple. All right, so powering this guy. We can get this thing started already. We'll take this and... Is the configurator... Is that something I have not made yet? I thought I made... The flux configurator, but I guess I have it. So let's go ahead and make a flux configurator. I'll make sure to EMC it this time. We'll set it to our network. And we should be good to go. All right. Let's go ahead and make sure these are in the right place. I think this one I'm going to place on the back side of these machines. Whack them with the wand. It's going to configure them. This one will go on the bottom. There we go. All right, so all these machines have configurable sides. It's not the easiest thing to configure, but it does work. We're going to go ahead and get some bone mill. Bone mill is what this machine uses. And it should help grow this thing. If I remember correctly. Plant fertilizer. Looks like it's doing its thing. It's probably checking all the crops and then running through like a pattern. And then it'll finally get to one. So we might need to find a way to speed these crops up and make them a little bit faster. Right now, though, as you can see, it just hit that plant. So this did work. By the way, we're picking up from there. All right. So this just picked up canola. 
and it picked up the seeds and it moved the seeds. Now, this is not going to accept the seeds. I think I'm just going to leave this open because this is not going to accept the canola itself. The canola is going to be in here, but you can see it generated a little bit of sludge when it did that. And that's what we're after is that sludge. So we finally have somewhere where we can store some sludge. So all we got to do now is get a screen and hook that up there and we should be good to go. So now that this thing is running, this thing is filled with sludge so fast. We really need to get this thing with a screen on it. Um, I think I, I, I don't know. We might have to use a pipe and I'm probably going to go with a fluid conduit. I, I think that's probably going to be the best thing to do is to go with a conduit, an ender fluid conduit. And we can put speed upgrades on this, I believe. Um, but the ender fluid conduit is probably going to be way faster than the node, which is what I was going to use. Let's get a task screen. What we need to do now is place this here, or we place it to the side, it doesn't really matter. What would be a better place for this? Maybe directly up, I think. All right, there's our task screen. Now, this doesn't have anything on it yet, so it won't let you connect, but sludge is what we're going towards, and we should be able to use a get a wrench to force this to connect. Will that not connect? Wow, a Yetta wrench actually doesn't connect to the screen. There it goes. Now that it has a thing, it will. Okay. So we just had to make sure the screen was enabled. And we'll set this to extract. Always active. And insert. And there we go. We have sludge building up. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to be fast enough. Now, we need to get this canola in its own place because the canola is going to be used later on to produce another liquid. By the way, over here, all I did was set up a flat transfer node and I have it going with some bone mill and it's automatically outputting here and you can see it's totally keeping up and this thing is going to be running at a blazing speed once this whole area gets uh, planted. So you want to make sure your sizes are correct because if you have your sizes messed up, it won't run as fast as you want this thing to run. Uh, I, I believe me. So, uh, this is producing canola. Once we have enough, this should put a spot here. Gather anything, gather trees, gather plants, only plants. And I uh, hopefully we can get this thing pulling out and going into another inventory. For right now, I guess we can store it in the barrel. So, we can get a, a Yaba barrel probably, which is what I was looking at, was the Yaba barrels. Take a look over here. We can pull ourselves out of Yaba Barrel and make ourselves an infinity capa uh, inf uh, infinite capacity upgrade. So this infinite capacity upgrade, the way that Slow has this pack set up is that if you fill this barrel with infinity capacity upgrade, it will convert that, the barrel, into a creative barrel of that item. So that is really cool, but it's like 2 billion items that you need to go in here. Uh, but that is a way of making non-creative items, creative items. So we'll take that, we'll slap that, that upgrade on there. So now we don't have to worry about it overfilling. And then we're going to set this to only pull out a certain thing, which is going to be canola. So we're going we're to need a filter just to be on the safe side. So a filter, we'll set that to extract, make, that, make sure that's an extraction filter of only canola and always active and insert. And that should fill that with canola. Now I'm probably going to actually pick this up, turn it sideways so that way we can access it. Um, but yeah, this is filling up. This should start running pretty quick. As long as this is going to be pulling out, we probably need to get a speed upgrades on this just to guarantee it's fast enough. Pulling these items out. And as you can see, there it goes. Look at that. It's doing a phenomenal job. We can actually make this a little bit quicker as well by throwing in some of those speed upgrades. But overall, this should be good. And as you can see, it doesn't even really need to have water. Uh, you would think it would, but it's going to fertilize anyways. And this stuff is already ready to go. It is going to un, you know, do itself here, but 
believe me, once this thing is, is harvested, it's going to just keep rotating over and over again, and it's going to automatically harvest it. So we don't even need water down there. So it gives us another spot. But yeah, that should be working pretty good. And it should be generating quite a lot of sludge, as you can see there. All right, so let's get started on some of the other stuff. And uh, like canola. So now that we have this canola, we're going to turn this stuff and start working on another quest, which is going to be one of the unlimited ones right here, which is going to give us refined canola oil. Uh, refined canola oil, which should be a process in itself. Uh, refined canola oil, I think, goes through the press. Uh, we'll have to find out. I do believe that it produces canola oil and then goes into a fermenting barrel. And the fermenting barrel produces the refined canola oil. Um, so we're going to get a setup for that going. Uh, we also need presses as well. So we have this canola oil here. And the fermenting barrel requires canola oil. So I should just need a stack of canola oil. And we should be ready to go. So fermenting barrels. Do we have the EMCable items? Wood casings. I know I have those. I'll just throw them in here. There we go. And that should allow us to make a few. So how many am I going to need of this? Well, one, I was thinking about maybe going with uh, 16, maybe. So we'll do a set of 16 here and then press. We'll need uh, the canola press. And I'll need like 16 of those. I believe that or one, I don't remember if it's one canola press equals two fermenting barrels. It's been a long time. So I need to sort of figure or remember this out. I think this automatically goes into its adjacent tank as well, as long as it's given some power. So flux or point, let's do that. We'll give this thing some power here. And we'll just test it out. We'll just see what this can do. And then we'll figure it out from there. So I know if I put the canola in, ah, the canola does go into here. And then we're just limited on time. And then it's going to produce refined canola oil. So this is the process. Okay. So now is coming up with a good design for this. So I, if I remember correctly, I, I still think that it is one canola press to, to this many. So we should end up with... Uh, we can have half as many canola presses as before. So we can do eight and in the fermenting barrels. We can do 16 or whatever, however, however many we have here. Um, so let's get these set up. We can do this on here. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, and that starts here at the steps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that looks pretty good. Uh, now we're gonna need some kind of placement blocks, which we're gonna use this. I'm gonna set up one press. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks a little weird. I think what I'm going to do is move these over just one. These over one, I mean. So there'll be one here, 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 and here. Yeah, that'll work. That'll be way better. Okay. So now that I have that visualization, uh, or actually I, I needed those blocks to be there. Because I am raising this up one. All right, so we're going to take this many canola presses. Lay them down. And we're going to use fluid pipes for this. Or the fluid conduit. Conduit just works really well. That's why I'm using it. So we'll take the inter inter fluid conduits. We're going to have a few of those running. Mostly just to fill this up. And these, will, these should all be sharing. Sharing is caring, right? So there we go. All that's nice and connected up. Looking pretty good. Uh, we just need to configure this. I think all I need to do is set these to extract always active. 
and the bottom ones will do the their own thing. They're already set to import. Actually, no, I have to change those too, don't I? We'll uh, we'll use the node for that. So let's go ahead and get our ender chest set up. And what I'm going to do here is place an item conduit one above this. Now this is, has an infinite capacity, and like I said, this is sort of a really nice buffer being here. Um, so I don't have to worry about this ender chest getting filled up and everything getting blocked. So having this as a nice buffer is awesome. So this is always active and insert. Now this is on the brown, brown, brown channel. And if you're on a server, you want to smack this little latch here with a diamond. So it locks it to your uh, player data. Otherwise, people will be able to access this if, it, if you're on a server or whatever. But locking these channels, this will put it uh, to a brown, brown, brown. And you can see canola is now going in there. What I want to do is also throw... Some speed upgrades on this, and you're gonna see canola filling up. Now it's gonna to go to this same chest that is marked to brown, 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 and we should be able to, over here, have this set up. We can place it right here, as you can see, and we should be able to take item conduits and route item conduits all the way on top of all of these, just like so. Bam. Perfect. And then to configure this, all we got to do is set these all to insert. Only takes a couple of seconds to do that. And then all we have to do is we'll have to enable this final one to get this started. Now, uh, we have to do this for a couple more. And if you don't want to do this, you can also use your Yetter wrench. And you can just click here and it automatically sets it to output. You can see there. It'll automatically do it for you if you just hit it with your Yetter wrench once. All right, so now that all that's left is getting all the fluids from these into this screen. Well, to do that, we need to use either some more fluid, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna use some fluid pipes here. Technically, we could use these same ones and then just route it down, but I'm gonna make sure these are on separate channels here. So that is automatically set to extract. At least it did just set it to extract. Let me take a pop down here, take a look. And you'll see it doesn't set it to always active though, which is what I need it to be set to. So what I'm gonna have to do is go here, click each one. And because I have the other wrench, this makes it really easy. And I'll just set these to automatically pull out, just like that. You can leave the insert, it doesn't really matter. I just like making sure everything is the same. Call me OCD, I don't I don't care, <laughs> whatever it is, that is what I do. So here we go. And we'll get them all pulled out. Literally, I mean, it takes a second. Eventually you get in a habit of it, it's pretty easy. All right, this one's a little bit different. I'm gonna pull, we'll do the same thing from the up. And then this one on the north face, that's gonna be insert. And that's where we're inserting things. All we gotta do now to turn this on is just to set this one to always active. These should start filling with canola and we need to run our power network. And for that, I'm gonna just power these from the top with more conduit. Pretty simple. Uh, we'll just set the power here and I'll just run power all along the top. And this is super nice because you don't have to configure this at hardly at all. All you gotta do is place down your power, make sure it's on, and these bad boys are getting power now and should start filling this with canola. Um, and it looks like things are doing pretty good, right? So eventually we're gonna start seeing this fill up and it's probably gonna go pretty fast. Yeah. It's already at 2.7 buckets. So once all this starts getting in here and this starts producing, this should start going pretty good. If anything, it's just going to continue to run as we do things. Um, and setting up a large, you know, large row of these would be okay. Just keep in mind that, you know, too much of anything is a bad thing. <laughs> That's what I always say. Even in single player, too much of anything can be a bad thing. And uh, let's just check on this. Looks like our sewage finished. 
So that didn't take very long for the sewage. Um, that was pretty, or sludge, not sewage. Uh, sewage is a different thing we're going to have to work on. Um, but yeah, that done, that's doing a pretty good job. Look at there. And this is, uh, this is going slow, but it's, it's working. How is this doing? Going slow, but it's working. That's 10,000 buckets. You got to keep that in mind. Uh, these quests are different. This is only like 50 buckets. These automatable quests are like 50,000 uh, buckets. So like th that one's, yeah, f that's a lot of buckets. That's 50,000 buckets. That's 10,000 buckets. Like that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff uh, to do. This is also one that's a lot of stuff to do, but it is also in conjunction. Now we have one other thing to work on. And I mentioned that last episode on how to get started with it. And that is making the refined fuel. So let's go ahead and get this automation set up. Now I have all the stuff ready to go for this. And this is a lot simpler than you might think. All you have to get is that oil uh, shell sand, which like I've said before, comes from the laser drill down below here, which for some reason is empty. Why is that empty? Oh, it's all in here. Oh, it doesn't automatically export. Okay. Well, that's good to know. It doesn't automatically throw it in here. But anyways, you need at least, you need either one of these oil shale, oil sand, or this oil sand. doesn't really matter. You need one of those. Uh, but we have that. We're going to use oil sand. And I'll tell you why here in a second. But we're going to need a magma crucible, fractionating still, and another fractionating still. And uh, we're going to need these augments. I want to talk about those in a minute. We don't really need them, but we're going to use those augments. So let's get this set up. It's super simple, right? We have a, a magma crucible, fractionating still, and another fractionating still. That's really all you need. We're gonna take these kits, I'm gonna upgrade these to the tier two, um, and then I'm going to specify a few augments. Each one of these fractionating stills can get one specific augment here, leaving one other augment space available. This can go ahead and get two of the auxiliary uh, reception coils which all this does is speed up the machine. It, it speeds it up, uh, which is really nice. Now these, which is the reflux column, this right here is going to give us a little bit more out of the uh, fossil fuels that we get. So it says right here, greatly increases conversion efficiency for the fossil fuels. So as we're taking coal from here, the oil sand, as we're doing that, which we can go ahead and set this up, We'll specify that and we can go ahead and say, all right, I want to pull, by the way, to clear this, I'm just holding shift and right clicking or left clicking in the center here. We're set this auto input enabled right here. That should automatically pull that sand in here or shell. And then we're going to set up a point right here. We're going to run some cables to these other machines. We're going to whack it with our flux controller. There we go. That's going to give this some power. So what this is going to do is start cooking, which is perfectly fine. Now we need this to output to this side, which we have specified here. Um, and this is going to be considered the output that's going to go into this machine. Once we set the output over here or the input, which is going to be this, it's going to start, you know, converting this fuel, right? You see, we get 150 here, but if we put this augment in, we're going to start getting more than 150. Yeah, that was a lot more. Um, and we're going to get tar from this. We're going to figure out what to do with this, these things here in a second. Uh, and I'll show you that this one, after we've configured this, we're going to set this one to output the NAFTA over here. We're going to clear this and we're going to accept that. And remember, we need to put this augment in here as well. And that's going to give us more fuel or more stuff out for our fuel. Perfect. That's given us refined fuel. And that's what we need for our screen, right? So let's go ahead and set our screen for refined fuel. And then we can literally just output directly to that right here. And it's going in this machine. So that's a very simple setup here, but we do need to get rid of this tar. Now this is a secondary output. We can use an augment that automatically removes the secondary uh, output. Uh, so let's take a look at this not at aug. There is an augment. Uh, I believe it is the nullifier chamber. So let's go ahead and pull that up. We will make one of those requires invar nuggets. And what this does is any excess output that it generates 
this guy will nullify it, which is going to be just fine. But what it's going to do is it's going to limit our auxiliary here. Well, that's fine with me. So there we go. If you want to keep the auxiliary, I recommend just piping these into a trash can. It is that simple. Um, if that's something you want to do, you can grab some trash cans. Like so. I think I have them stored. I do. And here's another thing you can do. So if you want to keep the speed, which I kind of want to, I just wanted to show you guys this stuff. Um, I want to keep these speed augments because that does help. It speeds things up. What we can do is just grab these out so we can EMC them, first of all, for later on. Place these down here. And then what we're going to do is we'll set this, because you can specify specifically this area. And you should be able to specify the yellow as an output. Uh, it looks like there is no auto output. Or there is an auto output. There it goes. It just took a little bit of time. But yeah, you can set this to yellow. That's going to automatically deposit that into the trash cans. And you don't have to worry about it. Uh, now you can just let these things do whatever they need to do. And which is just producing this fluid. Uh, so that was very, very simple. I hope you guys learned something. Um, there's a lot of augments and stuff that you could do with thermal expansion. And thermal expansion is a wonderful mod. Um, Let's take a look. Oh, we, we need to take this tar. Tar is the only thing we don't, I, I know we don't have in our EMC table. And sulfur, I believe we do. Yeah, we totally have sulfur. So yeah, um, there's some cool, super cool things that you can do with these mods. And it's just, you know, it's a matter of your creativity and how you want to logistically put things together. This is just a way that I've come up with it. If you want to try other ways that you could totally can. Um, like NAFTA, this stuff right here, I mean, there's other ways of, I believe, to produce it. The refined fuel, maybe not other ways to produce it, but uh, if you wanted to get crude oil, like figuring out how to get crude oil, you could have went with the bidium, uh, because I do believe that this, when broken down in a sag mill, can get you a high chance. It looks like, well, I would say a high chance is probably best just to cook that down, because it gives you a, a bucket guaranteed. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's there's all kinds of things that you can do with thermal expansion. I highly recommend checking it out. If you haven't played with it, of course, if you're in this pack, you're going to have to play with it. It's just how it's going to be. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned a thing or two. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh,